When I was a kid, I played a lot of Flash games. My first ever experience on the internet was in 2007 going on the Nickelodeon website to play various shovelware, Spongebob, and Avatar The Last Airbender Flash games. I spent many a night playing these games. It was good times. Newgrounds was a Flash game site that I discovered soon after that was completely niche and community oriented. You didn't need to be a great artist or game designer to make Flash games that millions of people would play on sites like Newgrounds, Armor Games, and Congregate. It was a playground of limitless amateur creativity. And that's what most of it was. Crude, simple, DIY entertainment made by a bunch of nerds and doofuses going goblin mode in the wild west days of the internet. Running on DSLs and shit, making games that define my childhood. But what happens when great artists and talented game designers and the creator of Newgrounds himself, Tom Fault, decide to make a Flash game? Get Alien Hominid, baby. A Flash game that was so good, it was ported to the PlayStation 2 and later became one of the first games on the Xbox 360 digital arcade store. This game had Dan Paladin's signature art style and immature comedic elements that would live on in every Behemoth game from Alien Hominid onward. And thus was the beginning of the game studio known as The Behemoth, just a few internet dudes making really cool shit out of nothing. This wasn't the first or only time this happened either. Some of my favorite games of all time were made by like five guys. Shit, all the art, coding, music, design, everything in Stardew Valley was made by one guy. One guy made this game, what the fuck? I love this man. Kiss him on the cheek. And while they didn't make Stardew Valley, Tom Fulp and Dan Paladin of Behemoth Games went together like, like fatherhood and alcoholism. A match made in heaven. They fathered a baby called Castle Crashers, and that shit was rad. Castle Crashers is a 2.5D beat-em-up with up to four players. It's set in a silly fantasy world where you fight barbarians, ride dinosaurs, crash weddings, trek deserts, get abducted by aliens, fight evil wizards, and this is maybe one of the best co-op games of all time. Couch co-op is maybe one of my favorite things in the world, and this game's great for it because you can beat it in one to two sessions. The controls are easy for non-gamer folks. It's really fun, and nobody has to take it very seriously. Your friends aren't gonna be screaming, middle lane, or left flank, or calling you slurs over the in-game voice chat. Castle Crashers is the ultimate casual gaming background to a hangout sesh. Whether it be when you're 11 and sneaking a monster energy drink into your friend's granny's basement for a sleepover, or sloshing cheap beers with your pals in a basement one of you is renting. When you're all on the couch playing Castle Crashers, or any couch co-op game for that matter, uh, nothing else matters for a bit. And I think that's beautiful. The game has a ton of soul, and I think it's because it's made by a team of dudes that just started by making cool shit on the internet for free, for fun. And they had a passion and focus that AAA studios today tend to not have. <laughs> Where games are often turned into homogenized, generic, safe, and cookie cutter uh, dog water. And it, and it really bums me out. Make me the CEO of video games and I'll put gamer fuel in the water and bring back fart jokes. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Also abolish the police and credit scores. But these fellers weren't just two hit wonder game devs because they did it again with an entirely different experience called Battle Block Theater. At this point, Behemoth Games were the masters of their own universe. They had dummy money from the immense success of Castle Crashers and didn't need to play it safe this time around. Battle Block Theater is weird and even sillier than Castle Crashers. Behemoth Games did not give one dang making this one and uh, frequently satirized themselves as well as the concept of video game stories as a whole. The game is described on its Wikipedia page as a comedic platformer. What the fuck, right? The game's story and many of its comedic elements are all tied together by one crucial element, and that is the only voiced character in the game, the narrator. Reminiscent of one of my favorite games ever, The Bard's Tale. The narrator's lines are almost all improvised by the hilarious yet crestfallen Stamper, who used to make YouTube sketches and animations and was a close collaborator of Chris O'Neill, or Oni. These days he smokes and doesn't filter himself very well. Um, you know, you win some, you lose some. Most of the dialogue written by him comedically has not aged that well, but when this game came out, two weeks before my 13th birthday, uh, it had me chuckling and chortling well into the night. The actual gameplay consists of running through platformer gauntlets full of all the classic platformer dangers such as uh, spikes, little guys, and uh, goo. And much like the previously mentioned Castle Crashers, the best part of this game by far was the co-op, but for a completely different reason. Because of friendly fire and player collision, uh, it was very common to spend most of your time in this game just fucking with the other person you're playing with, you know, drowning over one another, blocking a portal away, and this led to real-life fistfights, which 
I will never forget. Story time. Back in 2014, I was playing through the insane mode on co-op with a good friend of mine, Asa. I was staying at his house all weekend and we had already pulled one all-nighter where we you know, only slept two hours and probably drank enough energy drinks to build a castle out of kidney stones. You know, we were delirious the next day. In, in the insane mode, it's already timed and we couldn't help but still fuck with each other and waste time. So we were just being really loud and obnoxious and fighting each other all day. It was awesome, you know, building core memories. And that night, uh, we had some cod that Asa's stepdad had brought back with him from his trip to Canada. The cod, quality-wise, was not any better than something you could just get at the grocery store, frozen. But it was special to him because he caught it himself and paid over $500 to get it shipped back to the U.S. Which is kind of insane. But also, me and Asa did not know this at the time. And while balls deep into a goblin-like gamer sesh of Battle Block Theater, we hear the dreaded call. Dinner is ready. We scurry down and start eating some of the fish. And it's unseasoned and completely fucking bland and just flavorless. The only spice in Ace's entire house is cinnamon and that will not do. So we end up settling for this tartar sauce that he had in his fridge, right? So we take the tartar sauce and we put it on our cod. And after drenching our sad flaps of fish in tartar sauce, we notice something. The color of the tartar sauce was a little off and the smell was really off. I checked the expiration date. Went bad four years ago. So we scrape off the top layer of fish into the trash and scarf the remaining 70% of our cutlets and get back to gamer business. We had to beat insane mode. We had already gotten so far. An hour later, we hear Asa's stepdad yet again. And he screams for us to come into the kitchen. He's pointing into the trash can when we arrive. Which one of you did this? And we both froze. But Asa had to live with this guy. So I decided to take the blame. I said, it was me. I did that. And I tried to explain myself, but before I can finish, he goes, get the fuck out of my house. And I was like, for real? And he was like, yep. So I packed up my stuff and went home. Um, it was the only time I had ever been kicked out of somebody's house. And it was stressful and jarring at the time, but at least it made a good story. And so I never did finish my insane mode playthrough of Battle Block Theater. Um, I love you, Asa. Uh, fuck you, Carl. And this wasn't the end for Behemoth, but post Battle Block Theater has been less than awesome. In the 10 years since Battle Block Theater's release, Behemoth has only put out one game, uh, Pit People, which contains the same you know, comedic elements and art style in games prior, and a, and a protagonist named Blueberry, I like that. But the gameplay was reminiscent of a bad Fire Emblem clone, and so I didn't dig this one much. For the last five years, they've been working on a reimagining for Alien Hominid, and it looks alright, but it still doesn't have a release date, and the last devlog they put out was four months ago, but it looks pretty polished, and maybe it'll be great. Behemoth Games uh, doesn't have the most consistently, but the, the games that hit are home runs. Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater uh, still hold up to this day in my opinion. And if you can stomach really immature themes and just want to goof around with your pals, I highly suggest you give these games a shot um, or revisit them if, if you haven't played them in over a decade. And if you're wondering what a behemoth is, it, it's the big chicken in their logo. Thanks for watching. I love you. Oh god, I hope there's enough memory on that.